I now take the opportunity to introduce our worthy chief guest, Professor Sangeeta Srivastav, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Allahabad, Priyagraj, Uttar Pradesh. Having a vast teaching and administrative experience of 31 years, she has held several important portfolios, including the chair of the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Rajendra Singh University, Priyagraj. She has a number of research publications and books to her credit and has been a supervisor to several PhD students besides handling important funded research projects. I now invite Professor Sangeeta Srivastav, the Honorable Vice Chancellor, for her address. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, at the very behest, as I begin this uh, talk about today's program, I would like to thank Dr. Ashwini Kumar Dube, Executive Director, Environment and Social Welfare Society, Khajuraho, MP. And I also extend my word of congratulations for holding this webinar on the World, World International Day for Justice. The two, uh, Environment and Social Welfare Society Khajraho and Dr. Pragya Khanna, Principal Government College Udhampur, JNK. I extend a hearty namaskar to all of you. And also, I all the invited resource persons and all the viewers who are viewing this program on YouTube. <laughs> Justice, as we all know, encompasses all aspects of our day-to-day -day life. We are all judging all through the day. Can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Through the day. Based on justice to both genders, we can create a more enlightened and a more dignified society through education. As we are reeling through the pandemic, we are already witnessing the catastrophic consequences of over, overpopulation. And all of us have heard the word exponential growth. Exponential growth in, happens only in places where the population is very dense. So the population has gone beyond our control. And if women are educated, then it will have an impact on the population as well. Robert Malthus and Consordates insist on the importance of women's education. And among other things, it is linked to women's voices in public affairs, as well as family and social life. A more educated society with social, social enlightenment, public discussion, and widespread women's education would also have an impact on many other aspects of capacity building in the people in the society and community. Then we come to the idea of capability. What is capability? From the means of livelihood to actual opportunity. What is the means of livelihood and what is actual opportunity? Income and wealth are often uh, taken to be the best parameters to judge anybody's happiness index. But is income and wealth um, the main criteria for human success? Or income and wealth only forms a certain uh, certain area of the success of any individual but at the end of income and uh, livelihood the end lies in finding satisfaction and happiness so if there is no satisfaction and happiness then wealth and income are also not very meaningful like in the case of disabled people <laughs> Disproportionate distribution of family income is a major issue amongst children of both sexes in a family. If there are two wage earners in the family and there are children of both the sexes, then, then especially in Asia and Africa, there is a systematic preference for boys over girls in the family allocation of resources. The resources are not equally distributed among boys and girls, and which actually leads to deprivation. The deprivation of girls is
what happened uh, i think so i guess yeah she's been again. disconnected no she's connected okay Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Now, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can. So. because of this unequal distribution of family income among children of both sexes in the house the deprivation of girls is more readily happening and more reliably it is assessed by looking at capability deprivation capability deprivation is directly related to mortality morbidity undernourishment or medical neglect these are the underlying co factors of the the difference that parents make between boys and girls the gender bias is often more implicitly made in even western countries for one italy is known for its unrecognized labor by women in the most unglamorous family work and its implications for the personal freedom women would have and it is also has a bearing on europe and north america there are also many a cases where considerable gender bias which is a little hidden is done where they ha they have to send girls for advanced education or even when women have to be selected on top most positions on any institutions or any industry there is a bias also on the capability approach the lack of capability among women is due to undernourishment and malnutrition and also mortality and maybe many times because of maternal malnutrition we are supposed to create a just society and justice we expect only for from somebody who is sitting in the chair of a judge but if we see we are all judges and all the time we are making some judgments for somebody or the other so if we have to make a just society we have to put ourselves in the shoes of another person we have to put ourselves in the shoes of a person who is doing our sweeping somebody who is doing our cooking are we giving them just wages we must ask these questions do we give them a half day leave or a full day leave on a sunday those who put people who are doing uh, who are working for us the drivers the the chefs the other workers who are working for us we are unjust in our own terms so society has to be a just society if there is an unshared bur burden of disability that also has to be shared because that also creates an unequal system the capability matrix needs to be worked out too so with justice also on the other hand of on the side of the coin comes capability so we have to provide decent wages for decent physical work which we do not even pay to people in india today we have to come to that we india still has to arrive this can make better discrimination against the disabled and has a more democratic import it is better suited to guide the just delivery of public service especially health and education there is a nobel laureate all of you might have heard about her her name is martha nussbaum and her approach is the capability approach and she talks about capability and she talks about uh, happiness she talks about a life well lived so it is not money which leads to a life well lived there are various other uh, there are other uh, jobs where we need to have some gratification some satisfaction where we can call it was a life well lived so what are her justifications for a life well lived are freedom happiness capability and those are she must any woman who has 
she must have time to play she must have time to socialize she must have time to cook she must have time to meet people to laugh to get a treatment if she is sick and to be happy at the end to be happy another aspect of justice is equality and liberty that no one person should have any more right or liberty than anyone else everybody should have equal rights everyone's rights have to be protected and because we have to protect other person's rights we have certain duties towards other persons like we the english adage that goes very commonly as i say that your freedom will end where my own would begin so you have to think in terms of my freedom also if equality is important then capability is a central feature in human life if we are not capable then we cannot claim equality because we are unequal in terms of capability also another aspect of equality and liberty is that on the french side how much punishment should be given for what kind of an offense to anybody if anybody is able to decipher that or decide that then of course we can say that justice is done to a certain extent with this i think my time is up a bell has just rung which indicates that my time is uh, up so i would not take much time and uh, i wish you all the best for today's program and uh, good luck to all of you